cyclotron is one of the simplest and earliest particle accelerators. More specifically, the cyclotron accelerates charged particles. It was invented by Ernest Lawrence in 1930 at the UC Berkeley. Lawrence got the Nobel Prize in Physics for inventing the cyclotron. To build a cyclotron, get a flat cylindrical conductor. Cut it in half and separate the two D-shaped electrodes of it. The separation in the shown graph is exaggerated for illustration purposes. Now, connect each electrode to one end of an AC voltage source. The magnitude of the voltage used in real cyclotrons is in thousands of volts. Because of the difference in charges, an electric field will originate in the inside area from the positively charged plate to the negative one. The field lines are similar to those generated by a parallel plate capacitor. After a short period of time, the polarity will change, thus the charges on the electrodes will change. The electric field lines are now in the opposite direction. You will also need two gigantic permanent magnets. If you place one pole of the first magnet next to the opposite pole of the second magnet, the magnetic field lines will orient such that they will go from the North Pole to the South Pole. Set the conducting plates and the magnets in the way shown here and surround the whole apparatus by an evacuated container. This is a top view of the setup. If you place a positively charged particle such as a proton in the middle, the particle will feel a force in the direction of the electric field. After it reaches the plate to the right, it will no longer feel an electric force because the electric field inside a conductor is zero. However, because this charged particle is moving and is under a magnetic field, it will experience a magnetic force that will push it to the right as shown by the right-hand rule. The direction of the motion will change constantly, hence changing the direction of the force. Before reaching the inner edge of the plate, the polarity of the voltage source should change. To ensure such synchronization, the frequency of the AC voltage source should be equal to the particle cyclotron resonance frequency. Upon reaching the edge, the particle will experience an electrical force. Keep in mind that velocity is constantly increasing as the particle undergoes these forces. When it reaches the other plate, it will again experience a magnetic force in this direction according to the hand right rule. But this time, the arc it will make will be larger than the previous one because the initial velocity is now higher. The process will keep repeating and the momentum of the particle will keep increasing. After covering the whole spiral path, the particle will be ejected to its targeted material. The output velocity is given by the following formula, where R is the radius of the conductor. And by using the kinetic energy equation, we can derive a formula for the expected output energy, which is typically in hundreds of mega electron volts. Cyclotron has many uses including in nuclear physics, where a beam of accelerated subatomic particles can be used to bombard a variety of target materials to produce radioactive isotopes. Also, since some types of collisions produce short-lived positrons, the cyclotron is used in PET scan, which is a medical imaging device that stands for positron emission tomography. Furthermore, since the accelerated ion beams produced by cyclotron are energized enough to destroy living tissues, cyclotron is used in radiotherapy to target and destroy malignant cells. More advanced particle accelerators were invented later, but the cyclotron is still widely used until this day. Thanks for watching.